So today I want to talk about how to always have hope. How to always have hope. So a believer has to be hopeful. We need to be hopeful in no matter what circumstances we are, good or bad, we are hopeful. And I'm continuing with last week's sermon. But if you didn't watch last week, don't worry. It, it's, not, it's a sermon on its own. But when a believer has a biblical worldview, we can always have hope. And when you have hope, that means when you have a biblical worldview, you can always be rejoicing. You can always be joyful. You can always be happy. Because hope produces joy. Hope causes rejoicing. Hope causes happiness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now the world that we live in has no hope. Why? Because it doesn't have a biblical worldview. You can only have hope when you have a biblical worldview. And why? How do you have a biblical worldview? When you believe that the Bible is accurate, the Word of God is accurate in all of its teachings, it's inerrant, it has no mistakes, and it's absolute truth, it's the truth. Mm. Hallelujah. Then the Word of God will produce hope in your life. So, go down. The world, Word of God equals hope. When you have the Word of God, you have hope. Say hope. hope. Say it three times. Hope. 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 When you have hope, you overcome. Yes. Now faith is the victory. Faith is the victory we have. It overcomes the world. But faith is full of hope. Faith is hope. Because if you had to take a look at faith. Now let's say this is faith. Inside faith is hope. Now if you had to take a look at hope. And here's hope. Inside hope is faith. <laughs> so the two can't work without one another. Hallelujah. Let's take a look at Romans 4 verse 16. It says, Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So in context, it's talking about we are justified, made righteous by faith, not by the works of the law. Then verse 17 says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. What is it saying? It's saying that God called Abraham a father of many nations before he even had a child. Before he even had Isaac. He was the father of many nations. So what's that? That's hope. Because hope is believing in something that you can't see right now. So God said, Abraham, you are the father of many nations. So he calls those things which do not exist. You can't see it right now as though they did. Then verse 18 says, who contrary to hope, in hope believed. So that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken by God. So shall your descendants be. So Abraham believed in what God said. So he had hope. Verse 19 says, And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20. So he didn't look, he didn't just look with his physical eyes. He looked with his spiritual eyes. So you've got two sets of eyes. You've got these eyes, and then you've got your spiritual eyes. Now, when you're only looking with these eyes, you're not going to have hope. But when you look with your spiritual eyes, and how do you get your spiritual eyes to be opened? Through the Word of God. Like we said, the biblical worldview is the lens, the glasses you look through. So your eyes, your spiritual eyes are only open when you look with your 
We're through the word of, with the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 20 says, He did not waver at the promises of God, promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Now, how was his faith strengthened? He was strengthened in faith because he hoped. Hope strengthens your faith. And verse 21 says, And being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, he was accounted to him for righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. So we've got eight points today. Just to help you guys focus and know that we're making progress as we go through the points. So the first one is, I want you to know that Abraham believed in hope. And like we know, we are children of Abraham. So we follow his example. So what do we do? We believe in hope. And Abraham is faith. So faith believed in hope. So when you have faith, you have hope. Abraham believed in hope. And let's read Romans 4 verse 18 again. Who contrary to hope. What does it mean to be contrary to hope? It means it's hopeless. So even though the situation is hopeless. Say hopeless. hopeless. If you're in a hopeless situation... Does that mean you have no hope? No, you can still have hope in a hopeless situation. Isn't that amazing? Even though there's no reason to be hopeful. I was actually, this week I spoke to a couple and the husband has stage 4 cancer. And I said, do you have hope? And they don't have any hope for the situation. They're just waiting for him to die. Now, if you believe it, that's okay. It's not okay, but it's still, there's still hope. Why? Because you're going to heaven. Eh? There's lots of hope. So you can always have hope. But obviously Jesus wants you to be healed. But even if you aren't healed, in perspective, what does it matter? You're going to be with Jesus forever. This world is so, it's only a small time in, in compared to eternity. This is only, a, not even a second can't compare eternity to 80 years or 70 years or 50 years or 120 years. Hallelujah. <laughs> Who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations. According to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. So Abraham believed in hope, in hope believed. But where did Abraham get his hope? According to what was spoken. So, how do you get your hope? You take what the Word of God says, and then you know you have hope. Why? Because you must believe in the hope that what God says in His Word will happen. If God says this will happen, then you must believe it will happen. Then you have hope. Hallelujah. And then, if you have this hope, it will have a reaction or have a consequence or an effect on you. Like if I say, I'm going to give a million, I'm going to give a billion dollars to you. Okay? I'm going to give a billion dollars to you. Then you say, okay, prove it. So I give you a billion dollars. And here's a proof. And I send you a proof of payment. What happens? You're going to be excited you're gonna be happy right are you not and that you're gonna see it on your face eh? you're gonna be joyful but what happens you don't trust me you don't trust me then that proof of payment you're not gonna believe it right because well uh, this year someone sent me a proof of payment and I was like happy but then it turned out to be a fake proof of payment they didn't actually pay me <laughs> so if a person is not trustworthy you can't receive the proof of payment as proof but this proof of payment is 100% true it's not a fake proof of payment this receipt is actual and it's, and it's trustworthy hallelujah now you just have to wait for the money to end up in your bank account. So that hope is a future manifestation. Hope is believing that there's going to be a future manifestation. 
So it's actually future faith. Faith is believing in an instant manifestation. So if I say I'm going to give you a billion dollars, and then it's instantly in your account. I give you a proof of payment and it's there. An immediate payment. That's like faith. Faith is, I want it now. It comes now. Hope is it might take a day or two or three days to get into your bank account to show. That's like hope. You guys understanding? Mm. You look confused. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Abraham believed in hope. Now Romans 8 verse 20 says, For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in it in hope. Verse 21. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious freedom of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together unto now. So what is this talking about? It's talking about what's happening in the world. Like some of the world is under is being flooded, other parts of the world has fires. What's happening? There's birth pains. There's world, there's earthquakes, there's a climate, there's blastings of wind, there's war, there's different things happening because they birth pains for the sons of God to be revealed. And then it says. Not only that, but we, we also who are, have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. So like I said, Jesus paid, gave you the million dollars, okay? And what is this? He paid for your bodies to be renewed. He paid for you to receive a new body. But have we received it yet? Not yet. We're going to receive it in the rapture. So now we eagerly wait for it. And if you know you're going to get this new body, if you know that Jesus is going to come, what happens? You can be excited. Eh? It's the same way if I gave you a billion dollars, you know it's going to come. You can be excited. You're going to receive it. So the Bible tells us we must be excited. We must be eagerly waiting. It doesn't say like tediously waiting or... You know, angry waiting or fed up or whatever. No, it says eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. 24, it says, For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Verse 25, But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. So our second point is from verse 24. It says that the spiritual eyes of hope. So hope produces spiritual eyes. So it's the same way when Jesus said, if you have ears to hear, let, you, let him hear. So it's not talking about the physical ears, it's talking about your spiritual ears. So the same way that you have spiritual ears, you've got spiritual eyes as well. So how much do we use our sight in the world we live in? We use it for all time. It's probably the sense that we use for all time. Most of us wouldn't be able to function without our eyes. So if you can't function without your physical eyes properly, how much more do you think we can't function without our spiritual eyes? You guys following? Our physical eyes are important the same way your spiritual eyes are even more important. And what are your spiritual eyes? Hope. Hope is having a positive imagination, seeing in the Spirit. You guys following? Yes. And it says, for we were saved in this hope. Now, spiritual eyes, these spiritual eyes save you. It's part of faith. If you don't have these spiritual eyes, it's, you can't be saved. If you can't see yourself healed, it's difficult to get healed. If you can't see yourself Getting out of the problem you are in, it's difficult to get out of the problem you are in. That's why a positive imagination, this hope, is so powerful. But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Hallelujah. So what do you do? You say, Holy Spirit, open my eyes. 
Like it says in Ephesians 1, that your eyes will be opened. Your spiritual eyes will be enlightened. Your imagination will be enlightened with wisdom and the revelation of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And that's something you can pray every day. You can say, thank you, Holy Spirit, that you give me a positive imagination. And then what do you do? What opens your imagination? What opens your spiritual imagination? The Word of God. So then you take the Word of God and you hear it. You listen to teachings that are hopeful. Not teachings that make you depressed. Teachings that give you hope. Hallelujah. And your spiritual eyes are opened. And when you say every time when you open the Word, you read it with the Holy Spirit. You say, Holy Spirit, thank you that you teach me and you open my eyes. You give me wisdom and you help me to see Jesus in the Word. Hallelujah. Amen. Also partaking of the communion. When you partake of the communion, your spiritual eyes are opened. Hallelujah. Amen. Because many times when you partake of the communion, the communion is a, is, a, is a hopeful act as well. Because it doesn't always give you an instant healing. Because when you eat it, you're saying, thank you Lord, I'm getting better. Hallelujah. Each time when I eat it, I'm stronger. I'm healthier. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The next point is verse 25. It says, sure hope produces strong patience. Because what does Romans 8 verse 25 say? It says, but if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance, with patience. So if you have a sure hope, if you have a strong hope, you will have strong endurance. You will have strong patience. How can you work or do something if you don't expect a good result? It's difficult to do something if you expect a bad, you have a bad result. Like let's say you want to become an Olympic sprinter or an Olympic something, do something in the sports. If you don't expect to get a medal, how, why are you going to do it? There's no point. So every Olympic athlete, what do they do? They expect to win. They expect to get the medal. And then they train hard. They eat properly. They sleep properly. They don't just party all night with their friends. They'll go to bed early. They'll train many hours. And then after many years of training, they compete with expectation. So the same way, a believer who expects a reward has strong endurance. And like the Bible says, Jesus is coming back. So when you know that Jesus is coming back, when you know He's coming back with His reward, then what happens? You will have strong patience. You will have strong endurance. You will prioritize your life properly. Hallelujah. If the world goes out and drink, you know, Jesus is coming back. I'm not going to go drink with those people. Or if, if, you, if everyone is watching the whole time rubbish, you know, you're going to say, I'd rather spend time with Jesus than just watch my whole life away. Or do unnecessary stuff. You want to do something for the Lord because you know He's coming with your reward. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't just get a participation award. You, the Lord... Wants you to be steadfast in what He's given you to do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's take a look at Romans 15 verse 4. It says, God's Word gives you hope. Because in Romans 15 verse 4 it says, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Why do the Scriptures give you comfort? Why do the Scriptures give you hope? Because the Word of God is full of testimonies. Say testimony. testimony. It's full of testimonies. There's many, many, many testimonies of healings. There's many, many testimonies of financial help, financial breakthroughs. There's many testimonies of deliverance, of help, of many. If there's something you are struggling with, there's a testimony in the Bible for you. And the Bible says that they overcame the Satan, the enemy, through the testimonies. Yeah. In Romans, uh, in Revelation 12. When you take a testimony and you meditate on it and you read it and you listen to it 
And you, and you even take testimonies that aren't in the Word of God, but these ones are the most powerful. But if you take testimonies from people that have overcome, like Dirk, who, over, who has victory over smoking through the presence of Jesus, you can listen to his testimony because, you know, if God did it for Dirk, he can do it for you. So the same way if God did it for anyone in the Bible, he can do it for you. Because God's no respecter of persons. Hallelujah. So, the testimony gives you hope. So let's say you've got a skin condition. You've got acne. What do you do? You take a look at Jesus that healed leprosy. Leprosy is a lot worse than acne. Eh? <laughs> and Jesus, if you are willing, please can you heal my acne? What do you think Jesus is? Ah, that's, yeah, I've got bigger stuff to worry about. No. Jesus says, I am willing. Be cleansed. That's what he's told the leper in Matthew 8. So go read Matthew 8. If you have a flu, a common cold, a common cold is not so bad, it's not cancer. You know what? Jesus went all the way to Peter's mother-in-law and healed her of a fever. So if you've got a fever, Jesus touches you and says, fever leave. So you've got a testimony that any health condition, there's a testimony in the Bible. Take it. Hallelujah. Meditate on it. Then if you have what a problem with finances, take a look at what Elisha did to the widow who had nothing. Take a look at the Elijah and the, uh, and the woman and her son, how she was supported throughout the famine. There's lots of testimonies. Take a testimony. Hallelujah. So where does our hope come from? From the Word of God, from the testimonies in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And why does God give us a book? Or not a book, but why does He give us the Word? Because He's a God of hope. He wants us to have hope. In Romans 15 verse 13 it says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. So like I said, when you take the Word of God, knowing that your God is a God of hope, hope is going to do what? It's going to make you joyful. Hey? Joyful and full of peace. What's peace? Shalom. So even by just taking the word of God, hearing it and receiving it, you will receive health. You will receive completeness. You will receive help. If you have something that's not perfect in your life, that's imperfect, you will become perfect. Why? Because shalom means completeness. Peace means completeness. So just by... Taking the word of God, believing it, you receive completeness, you receive help, you receive joy. Hallelujah. That you may abound in hope. Hallelujah. Abound in hope. You need to take that imagination and think big. Eh? Think big. Think positive. Think very positive. You can't think positive enough. Say, people say, no, you're too positive. Don't get your hopes up. You can't get your hopes up enough. You need to get your hopes even... If you reach for the sun, you might hit the moon. But if you're reaching for this end, you're not going to even get off the ground. You need to reach high. If you're only reaching for a skyscraper, you're just going to maybe hit the third or fourth floor. But you need to reach for the moon and the sun and just go all the way up. Hallelujah. But then, this hope, this abounding in hope, is not just with your strength. It's... By the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's why you say thank you Holy Spirit for enlightening my imagination. Mm. Ephesians 1. Thank you for giving me your wisdom Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving me your revelation. Hallelujah. Also praying in tongues. The more you pray in tongues, the more you receive a vision, a positive imagination. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So even though you can't see things in your manifesting already in your life, it's already happened in the Word of God. It's already happened in the Spirit. So you need to hope. Hallelujah. And then you speak it. Because if you believe it, you'll say it. And if you believe it, you'll see it. And if you believe it, you will at least have a smile on your face. Eh? Because you'll be joyful. That's why 
Let's take a look first at point five. It says, God is not a respecter of persons. Say it. God is not a respecter of persons. Romans 2 verse 11 says, For there is no partiality with God. So like I said, find, find the miracle you need in the Word of God. And then recognize that if God did it for them, He'll do it for you as well. Hallelujah. So then, when you take that word and you believe it, what does it do? It causes rejoicing. Because hope causes rejoicing. Ha ha ha. <laughs> you can laugh and you can rejoice. Romans 12, 12 says, Rejoicing in hope. And then when you are rejoicing in hope, you can be patient in the trial, in the tribulation, in the temptation. And then continually, continuing steadfast in prayer. I believe that's praying in tongues. But also if you look at the King James I like how it said, continuing instant in prayer. So no matter what happens in your life, you need to instantly pray. No. Don't just wait. Instantly pray. No. Now if you're really hoping, you'll be able to see it. Because expectant joy is a sure sign of hope. No. Hallelujah. Say, expectant joy no. is a sure no. sign of hope. No. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's take a look at two other benefits of hope. When you're hoping, you'll be pure. Say pure. pure. And what does the Bible say? Those who are pure in heart will see God. So we're talking about seeing with our spiritual eyes. So when you're pure in heart, you see God with your spiritual eyes. So the Bible says hope produces purity. In 1 John 3 verse 3, it says, and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. So when you prioritize the word of God, when you prioritize and know that, hey, Jesus is coming back. I, this world is temporary. Every problem I'll face on this earth is just temporary. So what's the most important thing? Your relationship with God, eternal life, spending time with God is the essential, is the first thing. And then if you do the first thing, wisdom, what happens? All the other things, what does the Bible say in Matthew 6? It says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things, all these things shall be added to you. A good example was this morning where Eric was here at church and then his boss, his boss called him and told him to go fetch someone at the airport. And he said, can't that guy just get an Uber, you know, why must I go fetch him? I'm here at church. And then he didn't go. So praise the Lord with God bless Eric. Eh? Because he prioritized his time at church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So obviously the hope it's talking about here is Jesus coming back. But it's also talking about when you see Jesus with you. You need to know Jesus is with you the whole time. Acknowledge Him. Acknowledge that when you're busy working with something, He's working with you. When you need to do something, He needs to do it with you. Without Jesus, you cannot. And without you, Jesus will not. So you guys are doing it together. Hallelujah. And then the last point is hope overcomes sorrow. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 13 says, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. So the Bible says that when you know that Jesus is going to resurrect the dead and you're going to be raptured, you have hope. Hallelujah. Every problem, like I said, every negative situation in your life is only temporary. The, the bigger picture is that we're going to be with Jesus forever. And you might say, oh, I might lose out on what's happening. You have a bit of FOMO, fear of missing out here on earth and stuff that's going to happen. You know, heaven, God never serves dessert first. The best is still to come. In heaven, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be the best. 
So we still have a bright future ahead of us. Yes. Hallelujah. So the Bible says when you know this, you have hope. And the Bible actually calls it the blessed hope. Yes. The blessed hope of Jesus coming in the rapture for us. In verse 18 it says, Therefore comfort one another with these words. With these words. So these are comforting words, knowing that even though the dead have gone ahead of us, they will be resurrected. They're going to receive their new bodies with us. Hallelujah. And those bodies are going to be awesome. You're going to have your six pack. You're going to, you're going to never gain weight. You're going to eat as much as you want. You're going to look awesome, thick hair on your head, no wrinkles. You're going to look good your whole life, Mr. and Mrs. Universe. Hallelujah. And you will have hair. And you will have hair. <laughs> the Bible says that. <laughs> so, make sure you view all situations in your life through hope. Because the Bible is the, you need to put on the lens of hope perspective of hope. So view every situation in your life through hope. So obviously, having a positive expectation of good, no matter what the situation is in your future, but also knowing that Jesus is coming back. So then, is this so intense? In, tw in a million years time, is this going to be so bad? Huh? Think about it. If something bad happens now, even just in five years, does this matter? Huh? So you view things in, the context of eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. So believers need to believe in the hope that God's promises are true. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Awesome. Say, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. So then if you're hopeful, what happens? You rejoice. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Receive the blessing. Thank you, Abba Father, that you are our God of hope, and Jesus is our blessed hope. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that you always open up our eyes so that we can be hopeful. And thank you that this week you bless us, we rely on your blessing. We don't rely on our own efforts and our own strength. Thank you that you bless us, you bless our bodies, you bless our, the work of our hands. And thank you when we become rich through the work, that you give us the work of our hands, we'll know it's because of your grace, because of your blessing. And thank you, Lord, that you protect us, you keep us in all our ways, that you direct us. And thank you, Abba Father, that your grace is upon us. Thank you for your abundant grace. And thank you for your peace, Shalom. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.